Okay. So, um, y'all ready? Let's pray. Talking about. So, Papa, can I pee? No, you gotta listen. <laughs> Papa's turn. You pray. <laughs> can I preach? All right, guys. Um, getting back. First thing I want to tell y'all is. Um, um, first thing I want to tell you. You need to be quiet right now, okay, man? You're getting started. You prayed. You opened up, which is good, and you are gonna preach. There ain't no doubt. You're gonna be a preacher like Papa. Um, I want to tell you. You guys know this, but I'm going to say it again. Um, uh, the Bible is God's revelation of Himself. Right? He gave us a book, and that book reveals Jesus Christ to you and me. That's what it's about. Um, this message I'm going to share with you guys tonight um, started out a couple of weeks ago. and um, But in the beginning of this message, the Lord spoke a word to me. And... The word that he spoke to me is actually from Mark chapter 16. And it was just one little thing that was spoken of in Mark chapter 16. It says, after Christ, you know, had died um, and he had rose again. And this spoke volumes to me. Um, he said, you know, when the angel of the Lord appeared to the disciples, I mean to Mary and told Mary, Go tell my disciples that I have risen. But he had said, Go tell my disciples and Peter. Man, that's huge. That is huge. Because what Peter had done, the betrayal was so deep. And so, if the angel of the Lord, the messenger, wouldn't have said, and Peter, yeah. man, you know, but what's also amazing about that is that Christ had already foretold, had already foretold and told Peter that Satan desired to have him as wheat and sift him. And and Jesus said that when you recover, go and strengthen your brethren. Oh, yeah. What's amazing about Peter, man? We think, man, or. Uh, the, the other disciples that was with him, golly, hey, you betrayed Jesus. But I'm going to tell you something. Peter, I mean, this guy is like, you know, when it comes time for something to happen or whatever it is, remember, he's the first one that pulled the sword and was ready to fight. He's the one that stepped out of the boat while the other ones are saying, Lord, don't you care that we're dying? And, you know, Peter's like, you know, sees a, a basically... A ghost, they say, you know, walking on the water and it calls him out. So Peter wasn't no slouch in any kind of way. So, and it's Peter who actually, when they come and uh, Christ is betrayed, Peter's the one that follows him to the temple, to, you know, to Pilate. Where are the other ones at? Hiding. Scared. Right? But when... When the Lord was giving me this message, sometimes we find things in our life that we've done. Amen. There's things in our life, and that's why I wanted everybody to be here tonight. People that are down, I'm like, you know, Walt, I could see the last time I saw him, man, he was just down. You know? And sometimes we find ourselves maybe doing things we're not supposed to. But there's that word or that message that's there, and Peter. So right now is a time, like Jay, the message Jason got is returning back to the altar. Yeah. You know, it's... Man, God forgives. And we just need to press on. Yeah. Right? We just need to... So that message that God is, you know, wanting to deliver to you and me is, look, it's a, mess, it's a message of encouragement and, you know, and, uh, and hope. I don't care if you've been looking at things you're not supposed to be looking at or doing things or saying things, or whatever it might be, God is doing something right now. Right? Yeah. 
So now let's get to the message. So in the process of God showing me this stuff about David, it led me over to Samson and Judges. I've never ever decoded Samson. And, and I say I, I've never decoded it. The Spirit has never decoded it for me and showed it to me. Um, so this past week, the Lord began to speak to me by His Spirit and all of a sudden just start connecting dots that I didn't see before. And He's just absolutely amazing. So before we get into Samson, I'm going to lay out um, a little groundwork with the time of the Judges, the book of the Judges, because um, in this groundwork you're going to see how it all applies. So you guys ready? Yeah. Father, thank You, Lord, for Your Word. And Father, I pray, Lord, that everyone tonight, Lord, that's here and that hears the message, Father, including myself, Father, would be encouraged, Lord, to continue on, to press on, Father, to do what it is that You've called us to do for Your kingdom. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen and Amen. The book of Judges. The book of Judges stands in stark contrast to the book of Joshua. In Joshua, an obedient people conquered the land through trust in the power of God. In Judges, however, a disobedient and idolatrous people are defeated time and time again because of their rebellion against God. In Judges, we see how Israel had set aside God's law and in its place substituted it with that which was right in their own eyes. There's a lot of people out there that do things that said, you know, that's right in their own eyes, but how does God feel about it and how does He see it? Right? Yeah. The reoccurring result of abandonment from God's law is corruption from within and oppression from without. So look, you start dabbling and doing things you're not supposed to do. There's a consequence to that. You're going to see it in Judges. During the nearly four centuries that spans the book of Judges, it's actually 365 years. I'm going to show you. It's exactly 365 years. During the, near, uh, during the nearly four centuries or 365 years that spans this book, God raises up military champions to throw off the yoke of bondage and to restore the nation to pure worship. You know what pure worship is? Obedience. L listen to the people. The groups that obey. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. Obedience. But all too soon, the sin cycle begins again. We're in a cycle right now. We're coming out of a cycle, beginning a new cycle. The flowers are blooming. You could feel, you could feel the, uh, you know, the sap, the life coming back up in us again, coming through. Uh, we're just coming through a dark time. Amen. Right. The Hebrew word for judges can mean judges, rulers. Deliverers or saviors. Remember, I'm going to go back to what I told you again. The Bible is God's revelation of Himself. That's what the book is for. Not to show you anything else but Jesus. Because that's what it's all about. Right? I don't want to see Charlene. I don't want to see me. I don't want to see Pete. We're all, you know, family. There ain't no showboating around here, no kind of way, shape, or form. When it's all over, it's said and done. I want I want people to see Christ in me, Amen. not me. Amen. The Hebrew word for judges can mean judges, rulers, deliverers, or saviors. Seventeen judges span the 365 year period, starting around 1380 BC to 1015 B.C., and it was called the Dark Age. Joshua went in, took the land. He ruled for 20 years. He didn't fully obey, them, obey the land of all you know that was in it, the inhabitants right of the land of Canaan. So we find in Hebrews that Joshua was a picture of the Savior, but not the Savior. 
Right? We see his downfalls and all that. Right. We see the inspired sod. We see the flesh sod in the Word. Right? It was called the Dark Ages. Seventeen judges span this time. The seventeenth was just the resurrection of Christ. Right? Seventeen means resurrection. There is a repeated phrase throughout the book of Judges that says, In those days there was no king in Israel. Thus, illustrating the need for a righteous king. So for 365 years after Joshua, the time of the judges comes up, for 365 years there's 17 different judges that's in there until we see the first king, which is Saul. They rejected God and His rule because they wanted a king for themselves. The key word in judge in Judges is cycles. Wow. Cycles. It's what we in right now. Right now, Jesus just arose from the dead. I think it was Monday, right? We just started the counting of the Omer, seven sevens, to Pentecost. So right now we're in the barley harvest. A time to reap, a time to gather. You're going to find right now, you're going to be reaping in and gathering in what it is that God has for you and me. Man, the heavens are open right now. Things He's poured it on us, right? Because of disobedience, they cannot, listen to this, because of disobedience, they cannot drive out the enemy. Wow. You got the enemy knocking at your door, beating you down continually? It's because of disobedience. You can't drive him out. You're plagued by him. He's doing things. He, man, he's sifting you. He has a right to you because of the sin that's in our life. The message just came back last week. Jason talk, started talking to me a message about, man, the altar, calling me back to the altar, the altar. The, yeah! Christ on the cross was the altar. It's that time. The reoccurring phrase of every man did that which was right in his own eyes keeps reoccurring re throughout the time of the judges. But, listen to this, every man did that which was right in his own eyes, but what was evil in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. There are people that walk out their walk with Jesus Christ to what's right in their own eyes, but what does God say? What does His Word say? How are we supposed to be living our life? Man, are you guys ready? Here we go. So God led me to the book of Judges. And you guys can turn to the book of Judges. It's right after Joshua. And we're going to start in Judges chapter 13. Um, it's pretty amazing because I've never been able to... Uh, I saw some things in in Samson's life, I'm like, Lord, you called him a man of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, I think around verse 30, 30, 34, somewhere up in there. Barak, how much more can I say about Barak and Samson and other, these great men of faith? And we look at Samson in his life and we see nothing but women and failure and all of these things. But remember, the Word of God is... A book about the revelation of himself. That means Samson is a type of Christ. But I never was able to see how. It's pretty amazing that there are four people in the Bible that had the Nazarite vow. <coughs> Check this out Samson, Samuel, John the Baptist, and Jesus. Wow. All of them had miraculous birth. Three of them were barren. And Mary, well, she was, you know, overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. Right? They all had the Nazarite vow. Now, if you go to Numbers chapter 6, you'll see a Nazarite vow. They're not to cut their hair. They're not to eat from the vine. Nor can the mother eat from the vine. You know, they had a certain thing they can eat because they were separated as unto God. Right? Jesus was called a Galilean. He was called, you know, a, a Nazarene. All of these things. So Jesus had long hair. Right? So watch this. Let's decode this. God, you are amazing. 
the message today is the inspired life of Samson. And if I told you guys this, I told it to you before. The extra biblical texts that are out there are not inspired by God. And the reason they're not inspired is because the Word of God is inspired because it's all focused on Jesus Christ, not um, not Moses' life prior, not this one's life prior. In fact, when you come to Jesus Christ, your life now becomes inspired. You understand that? It means you become a testimony for Jesus Christ. Your life is now inspired by the Holy Spirit to do what it is that you're doing. God will lead you down a path that others might think, hey, that's, you know, he's doing something wrong. But if the Spirit is leading you down that path, and it's the right Spirit, and you know it, and it doesn't go against the Word of God, well then, it's God. You have to walk the path. But you need to know if it's Him or not. Judges, chapter 13, the miraculous birth of Samson. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. Remember Goliath crying out for forty days? It was the Philistine giant, right? This is a reoccurring thing. And I told you that Philistine is the Hebrew word, uh, Mizraim is the Hebrew word for Philistine, and Mizraim means Egypt. Egypt having them in bondage. Pharaoh is a picture of the Leviathan, the great dragon, sin that's over him, that's keeping him in bondage, right? And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for forty years. Now, there was a certain man of Zorah. Now, Zorah means hornet. There was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites. Zorah means hornet. And the tribe of Dan means judgment, whose name was Manoah, and Manoah's name means rest. So Samson was a Danite, was of Dan. He's a judge, judgment. So this is the picture. This is going to be a picture of Christ, not so much. Let me stop. I'm going to get ahead of myself. So a certain, there was a certain man uh, of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. So he was of the land of hornets. He's of the tribe of judgment. Remember, hornets were God's agents that God used to chase out the kings in the land of Canaan. God said, I'll send the hornets to drive out the people. Wow. The hornet is God's agent. And I'll show you that biblically. So it says, And his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Here it is, the angels appearing and giving forth. Just like, you know, uh, the other men I'd mentioned. Now therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, not strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. So he is a Nazarite deliverer of the tribe of Dan. His father's name is Manoah, whose name means rest. I got Noah on sodomy, right? His father's name means rest, and he lives in the land with the hornets. Wow. I'll tell you a story about a hornet I learned the hard way. <laughs> then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible, meaning awesome, but I asked him not whence he was, neither told he, me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and, no, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O my Lord, let the man of God, which thou didst send, come again unto us, and teach us what we shall do unto the child that uh, shall be born. 
And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah. And the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that speakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. Wow. Wow. That's right. Wow. Wow. That's God. Hmm. That's Jesus. The angel of the Lord is announcing the birth hmm. of Manoah, wow. who is going to be a picture of himself, of Christ. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child? And how uh, and what and how shall we what shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat anything that cometh out of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I have commanded her, let her observe. He is separated unto God as unto holiness from the birth. Right? And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we shall have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? Hmm. That when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou after my name, seeing it is a secret? Wow. That's Isaiah 9. He's the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the wonderful Counselor. This is... What he, what Manoah is actually facing and talking to. His name is a secret. Why? Because his name Yeshua actually means salvation and deliverance. Mm. Right? We think it's just an angel, but it's not. It's the angel of the Lord. We're going to see it in a minute. So Manoah took a kid with meat offering. So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously. And Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass, when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. Let me tell you something. If that was an angel, a regular angel, he couldn't have entered the flame. That was the offering, the burnt offering that was going up and only the Lord can receive that. Wow. You understand? This is an altar and an offering. Watch. And they fell on their faces to the ground, but the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and his wife. Then Manoah knew that it was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die because we have seen God. Wow. But his wife said unto him, If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would have not received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have showed us all these things, nor would, as he at this time, have told us such things as these. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. Kind of sound like Mary, huh? Mm. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between the hornets, Zorah, and Eshtal, the way. Samson's name means sun-like, S-U-N-like, like the sun. Wow. 
is in Christ. Hmm. The light of the world. Hmm. He's a judge and He's coming with fire. It's the hornets that drive Him out. He's living in the land. Dan is judgment. Uh, man, little things start breaking down. Watch. Now, in Samson, chapter 14, and Samson went down to Timnath. Now, Timnath means an allotted portion. This allotted portion is where the Philistines lived in the land of Judah. So Samson, you know, went down to Timnath, which is in Judah, to this allotted poor land that the Philistines actually had, the land of Judah. They took it from them, right? Judah came in, possessed the land because of sin. 365 years, the Philistines started putting it on them and taking some land back. And Samson went down to this allotted portion, Timnath. Remember I said, when I went, remember I told you guys at work, it was Tim who said, Man, you look like Samson. You shaved your yeah. face, Tim. And uh, and he saw one. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, "I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife." Let me tell you something about Samson, which is mind-blowing. Samson only reigned for 20 years. You know when his ministry began? He was 13 when he went and looked for a wife. he just huh. become a man. Wow. He left his father and mother, went, which is usually the father gets the wife. At 13 years old, he went and, and went to go get a wife. He reigned in a land for 20 years. 20 and 13 is he died at wow. 33 years old. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. Watch. I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. <clears throat> now therefore get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren? Or among all the people that, the, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord. Wow. 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 They had been in bondage for 40 years. Would you think Joseph being in with Pharaoh, his right hand man, be of the Lord? You'd be like, no, judging him. What are you doing? Dressed up like an Egyptian. His brothers didn't recognize him. True. Who are we to pass judgment? God doing something. True. He was using Samson as a deliverer. Because he's a type of Christ, son like. His Father's name means rest. Christ is our rest. We we'll strive to enter into that rest. His mother was barren. A miraculous conception. Jesus' mother. Miraculous conception. When Samson died, he was buried in his father's tomb. That means his daddy was dead when he died. Joseph was dead when Jesus died. Crazy amazing. The similarities. Wait. Oh my God. Wow. That's all I can say. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord. Wow. That he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Let me tell you something about 13. Paul's first missionary journey. Three years in, the, in, in, in Saudi Arabia. Ten years with Aquila and Priscilla. Thirteen. Then he did his first missionary journey. Joseph or uh, Joseph, 17, sold into slavery. 30 years old, he st stands before Pharaoh, right hand, 13 years. David, anointed king at 17, becomes king at 30, 13 years. Samson became a man at 13. 13. See that number? 13. 12 disciples and Jesus, 13. God orchestrated. We're going to open up some stuff tonight. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath, to this allotted portion. 
and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. Christ is the roaring lion. Well, Satan is also a roaring lion, but Christ is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Where are they at? Judah. The land of Judah. In an allotted portion where a lion is. Right? And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. This, let me tell you something about this time. Samson is going down at a specific time to get a bride. We're going to find out what time that is. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily and he rent him as he had rent a kid and he had nothing in his hand but he told not his father and his mother what he had done. And he went down and talked with the woman and she pleased Samson well. And after a time, he returned to take her. And he turned aside to see the carcass. He turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. Bees swarm in the springtime. <laughs> Watch this. And he took their forth in his hand and went on eating. And he came to his father and mother and gave them. And they did eat, but he told them not uh, where he had gotten the honey, how he had gotten the honey out of the carcass of the lion. Because being a Nazarite, he can't come next to any dead thing. Right? Nazarite vow, number six. No strong drink, no wine, no anything unclean, no cutting the hair, and anything, if you come, nothing dead. Right? Like Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Hey, I ain't going down there. He's the God of the living, not the dead. Right? So his father went down unto the woman, and Samson made there a feast. So used... Uh, so, uh, the, so as the young men uh, did. And it came to pass when they saw him that they brought 30 companions to be with him. Man, they brought 30 companions to be with Samson. And Christ was sold out for 30 pieces of silver. The ministry starts at 30 years old, right? Christ, David, um, Joseph, and on and on and on. You're going to find out tonight that 3, 30, 300, 3,000 all mean the same thing. But in a way that absolutely mind-blowing. Watch this. And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you. And if you can certainly declare it to me within seven days, because this is his marriage time, I will give you 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. 30 friends is with him, 30 sheets, 30 changes. And they're really not his friends. They, of Timnath, these 30 Philistines that are there with him, right? But if you cannot declare unto me, then you shall give me thirty sheets and thirty changes of garments. And they said unto him, Put forth thy riddle, that we may hear it. Let me tell you something. This riddle is about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The lion, out of the mouth of the eater. Right? Out of the mouth of the eater. The lion. Comes something sweet. Right? Be sour, sweet in your mouth, but sour in your stomach. It's a picture of Christ. Watch this. And, and the only way you can figure out the riddle is by um, talking to his heifers. Because wow. talking to his heifer. Because it was Samson's bride that gave him the meaning oh, of the riddle. Why would she come to heifer? I'm a read. Watch. You see, you and I, 
And I'm going to show you what goes on here. But you and I, you know, we're the bride and we're to unfold the riddle for all those that are out there so they can get new remnant. A new body. Watch this. And he said unto them, Out of the out of the eater came forth meat. Yep, that's Christ. And out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. Three? Wow. And it came to pass on the seventh day, these thirty that are with Samson or Philistine, Philistine. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband, that he may declare unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. Oh, Lord, fire? Have he called us to take that which we have? Is it not so? Meaning, look, you one of us. You gonna not tell us? You want us, you want, you know, to take what we got and give it to him? And Samson's wife wept before him and said, Thou dost but hate me and lovest me not. Thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people, and hast not told it me. Boy, them Gentile women, huh? Hmm. Jesus loves her. That's you and me. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it my father nor my mother. And shall I tell it thee? And she wept before him the seven days while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her because she, because she lay sore upon him. And she told him a riddle to the children. And she told the riddle to the children of her people. And the men of the city said unto him, On the seventh day, before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, If ye had not plowed with my heifer, ye had not found out my riddle. That was pretty small to them. She betrayed him. Judas betrayed Jesus. And he's mad. We see the Savior come, but remember, Samson is a judge. This is a picture of when he comes. His return. Watch this. You guys are going to trip. He says, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon, which is one of the five cities of the Philistines, and slew thirty men of them, and took their spoil, and gave them change of garments unto them, which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend, his own friend, who he had eaten sup with, has turned up his heels against him. Right? So he didn't consummate the marriage. He left mad. Right? Oh Lord, here we go. So now, he's coming back. At a certain time. Let's find out when. But it came to pass within a while after, in the time of the wheat harvest. What is the wheat harvest called? First day of the wheat harvest is what? Pentecost. Pentecost. It's coming, it's right in front of us. The barley harvest lasts 49 days. The 49 days of the counting of the omen, the 50th day, is the wheat harvest. Samson is coming on Pentecost for his bride. 
Watch what happens. Let's see if it's Pentecost. Watch this. But it came to pass within a while after, in the time of the wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid. And he said, I will go in to my wife and to the chamber. Consummation of the marriage. Pentecost. But her father would not suffer him to go in. And her father said, I verily thought that thou hadst utterly hated her. Therefore, I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of uh, her. And Samson said concerning them, Now shall I be more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them a displeasure. What he had done to them. And Samson went and caught 300 foxes and took firebrands and turned tail to tail and put a firebrand in a mix between their tail. Wow. 300. 300. Does that sound familiar? 300. Gideon and his 300. It was Pentecost. Bam! When they smashed the broke the vessels, there was up on top the mount in fire. Here it is, Pentecost, and Samson is set in the fields on fire. Now let me read something to you really quick. The meaning of three hundred in Hebrew. Man, guys, this is it. Going to get crazy in a minute. The meaning of 300 in Hebrew. The corresponding Hebraic letter is the shin. You know, that looks like a W, a shin. God's handprint in, in, in Israel, stamp, His marker. The number 300 in Hebrew, the corresponding Hebraic letter is the shin or the sheen. This letter represents the three knocks of a mallet or the three tongues of the flame of the Holy Spirit going down on the apostles. Mm. What? Wow. 300 foxes tied their tails. A fire. 300. What does it mean? Let me read it to you again. The corresponding Hebraic letter to 300 is the shin or the sheen. This letter represents the three knocks of a mallet or the three tongues of, of a flame of the Holy Spirit going down on the apostles in the Bible. 300. Check this out. Now, 31 times, 300 is mentioned in the Bible. 31 times. And... By the law, the biblical law of where the first number appears in the Bible, usually that's its meaning. Just like the 40 days is a representation of 40 years or 400 years of bondage. 40 days of bondage, 40 years of bondage, 400 years of bondage. You see the pattern? Because there's no, in the Hebraic numeral system, there's no... Zero means nothing, right? So 300. Let's see where we see 300 in the Bible. Check this out. The first place 300 appears in the Bible. The Bible says, And Enoch was 65 when he began to walk with God. And he walked with God 300 years, and he was no more. For God had taken him. 300 began, you know, a new time for Enoch. He was taken out. But what's crazy amazing is that he was 365 years old. What is... I just read that to you. Listen. Judges. The 17 judges span a time. 17 is a number of resurrection spans a time of a 365 year period. Wow! Is that crazy? 
So Enoch, 365, the time of the judges, 365 years. No coincidence. But it's the 300. Enoch walked with God 300 years. Right? And then here it is, coming to Samson. He grabs 300 foxes. Why? Because it's, it's letting us know what time it is, what's going down, what Christ is about to do. So watch this. So in the Bible, it appears about it appears 31 times. Where else do we see it? How about New Testament? Mary, the sister of Lazarus, anoints the feet of Jesus. Remember, Lazarus' wife betrayed. I mean, Lazarus' uh, bride betrayed him, right? And because of it, you get this 300, right? Mary's sister, Mary, the sister of Lazarus anointed the feet of Jesus with a perfume of pure nard costing 300 denera. Who opened his mouth about it? Judas. And Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Here you're going back. The 30 in Judges the 300 in Judges, Jesus, the 300 with the spike nard, the 30 pieces of silver, betrayed by the bride, right? 330 is there. But also, remember, 3 is there too. 3, 30, the number 3, the number 30, the number 300. Let's see if it goes on. This is mind-blowing because the length of Noah's ark would, would end at an age which the ark was lifted up on the 17th as well. The ark is 300 cubits by 30 cubits by 50 Pentecost. What did we just read about? Right? The Hebraic letter or the three knocks of a mallet, or the three tongues of the flame of the Holy Spirit that came down on the apostles on the day of Pentecost. Noah's Ark, 300, 30, 50, all the same thing. Wow. Gideon's 300, and Judges chapter 7, verse 7, on top of a mountain, Right? Out of the 32,000 men, he chose 300. They went up on top, remember? The bread, the roll, surely the dream, the roll that rolled down the hill and flattened the tents. Surely this is, you know, the sign of, of, of Gideon and the Lord that he's going to come in, right? What did they have in their hands? A lamp and a shofar. And they smashed it. And they were up on top of the mountain in a big war down in the valley. Gideon's 300, day of Pentecost. <clears throat> Remember? God gave us the word. The law came on the day of Pentecost, Mount Sinai. Remember all the connections with the day of Pentecost. Also, the 120 were filled on the day of Pentecost. Remember Elijah called down fire three times. Three on how many? 3,000. A thousand. Oh man of God. Oh man of God. If I'm a man of God, let fire come down and consume you. First thousand. Second thousand. Third thousand. Who was there by the three thousand? Fifty prophets was at the Jordan. They backed away. Why? Because of the fire. Are y'all with me? Stand up and shake it off because I ain't got to the good part yet. God is crazy amazing. <laughs> Here. Yeah. Samson captured 300 foxes. Then he loosed, on, he loosed them on fire in the harvest of the Philistines. It was the wheat harvest. This is Jesus coming as a judge. Dan means judgment. Right? The tribe of Judah, line of the tribe of Judah, they're in a, an allotted portion in Judah. 
Enoch served the Lord 300 years. He was taken after 365. Check this one out. How about Joseph? Genesis chapter 45, verse 22. Joseph gives Benjamin 300 pieces of silver. Ooh, now you know what day it was. And five changes of raiment. On Pentecost, we get a new body. You being clothed in righteousness, when we get to the Lord, we're clothed in heaven. He gives us a robe of righteousness. It's not a white robe. It's a new body. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Here, it gets really crazy now. Watch this. 300 is the amplifier of the number 30 in Hebrew. The picture meaning of the number 30 is the Lamed. Now the Lamed, it looks like this, this like staff with this whip up on the top. And it's depicted, it's a depiction of a shepherd's staff, which means... Right? Which means to control, to shepherd. To have authority, to urge forward. That's what a shepherd does, this staff. Number three, it's a picture of the tongue and the voice of authority. The staff. The little hook on the end of the tongue that comes up. Yeah. 330, 3, 3,000. It's all pointing to this. Watch this. Now it's going to get good. And Samson went and caught 300 foxes and took firebrands and turned tail to tail and put a firebrand in the midst between the two tails. Tails turn up, right? These foxes he caught, 300 of them. And, then we, and when he had set the brands on fire, he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines and burnt up both the shucks and also the standing corn with the vineyards and the olives. Let me tell you something about the fire. Either you're going to become part of it or you're going to be consumed by it. Either you're going to become part of the flame. The angel of the Lord went up in the flame. The flame rested on the apostles. That's one of two things. Either you're going to be burnt to ashes by it, consumed by the fire, or you're going to become part of the fire. Then the Philistines said, Who hath done this? And they answered, Samson, whose name means sunlight, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he had taken his wife and given her to his companion, and the Philistines came up and burnt her and her father with fire. Man, this is all about fire. And Samson said unto them, Though you have done this, yet will I be avenged on you. And after that, I will cease. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Are y'all still with me? Y'all yeah. sure? Y'all yeah. want me to stop? No. Oh my Lord. Here we go. Check this out. And he smote them hip and thigh. What? With a great slaughter. Please, someone connect that. We just had it at Passover, the shank bone. They won't touch the shank bone because of Jacob's hip that the angel of the Lord, God Himself, touched His hip, touched the socket of it. Yeah. It was Jesus. Here it is. Samson smote them hip and what? And thigh. Wow. At Passover... That bone, they won't touch, they won't break it. They won't, because it's all a depiction of Christ. It's a depiction of Jacob to them. But it's a, it's a, uh, the greater picture is the, the picture of Jesus Christ. Samson smote them. Watch. 
And he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter. And he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock of Etam. Now, Etam means a wild place. He went up on a, on a mountain and Etam. The fire, Pentecost, a great slaughter. Watch this. Then the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi. Lehi means cheek or jawbone. And the men of Judah said, Why you come up against us? And they answered, To, to bind Samson we have come up, to do to him as he has done to us. Oh my God, son. Next verse. Then 3,000 men of Judah went to the top of the rock of Etam. What? When... 3,000 on top of a mountain when the law was given. 3,000 died on Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit came down, 3,000 was saved. 3,000 on the day of Pentecost go up to the top of the rock of Etam. 3,000 in AI. <laughs> Man! And said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us. It's time for deliverance. What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so I have done unto them. So we got a fire, a wheat harvest, and 3,000. <laughs> Man. And they said unto him, we are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, remember they bound Christ and delivered him to Rome. Right? And Samson said unto them, swear unto me that you will not fall upon me yourselves. And they spake unto him saying, no, but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into their hand. But surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. It gets crazy now, son. And when he came unto Leha, which is the place of the jawbone, the cheek of the jawbone, Pentecost, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. And the cords that were on his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire. Wow. It's Pentecost. It's judgment time. Right? He was coming for his wife. His wife was given to another by the father of a Philistine. With a bride. You better be looking for him. That bride didn't have to go in and consummate the marriage with this other guy. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax and was burnt with fire, and his bands loose from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass. And he put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men with it on Pentecost. Now, this is kind of crazy because I remember the jawbone of an ass speaking. <clears throat> speaking. When the angel of the Lord the angel of the leader of the host of the army of the Lord was standing in front of uh, Balaam yeah. and his donkey. God loosed the mouth of the ass and he spoke. And surely, the, with, with the ass speaking, it saved Balaam's life because the angel said, surely I'd have killed you. Wow. 
So an ass speaking with a human tongue, right? And Samson said, check this out. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking, he's whipping their butt speaking on the day of Pentecost with an ass bone, putting it on them, son. Putting it on them. This is crazy. And it came to pass, with the cheekbone of an ass, I'm sorry. <laughs> And it came to pass. Well, I just called it just now. When it came to pass. All right, all right. I'm a little excited. And it came to pass. When he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand. Watch. And he called that place Ramath Lehi, meaning the lifting up of the jawbone. Right? And he was sore athirst. What? Oh, no. What? Wow. <laughs> no! No way! I mean, I remember Christ saying that he athirst. But this is way deeper than that. Watch what happens. Because I think biblically it says... That on that John chapter 7 was the interpretation of Joel chapter 2. That out of you, out of your belly, from your cheekbone shall flow rivers of living water. Remember that? This he spoke of, of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Let's see. And he was sore athirst. And he called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this, thou hast given this great deliverance into, hand, into the hand of thy servant. And now shall I die for thirst? And fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? But God. But God. I got that circle. But God, thank you, clave a hollow place that was in the jaw. And there came water there out. Oh, crazy. Tell me this ain't Pentecost. I dare you. I'll beat you with... Don't say it, Pete. <laughs> but God. But God. Say it again. But God clave and hollow place in the jaw, and there came water there out. And when he had drunk, his spirit came into him again. Wow. That's none other than John 7. Yeah. This is Pentecost, baby. Pentecost. Yeah. I think Samson's life can be a replica or a foreshadow of Christ to come. But when He comes, son, beware of the jawbone of the ass. Because, <laughs> son, He is going to put it on them. It was a thousand, remember? How long does Jesus rule and reign when He comes back? A thousand years. Yeah. Oh, no. That's just way too many coincidences up in here. <laughs> Remember, it's always about Jesus. This book, this inspired word, was given to us by God 
so he could reveal himself mm. to us. <coughs> and it always repeats itself. That's exactly right. <laughs> and the name thereof in that place. Let me go back. But God clave a hollow place that was in the jaw. And there came water there out. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again. And he revived. Wherefore, he called the name thereof in ha Korah, which is in Leha unto this day, which means a fountain of him that was called upon. Mm-hmm. There's a fountain in him that was called upon. Mm. Our source. Mm. Wow. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. And you know 20 years is symbolic to the 20 Jubilees, which is a thousand years. 6,000 years. Christ comes, rules and reigns for a thousand years. What is this? Isn't it crazy? This is all speaking about His return when He's coming. He's bringing forth judgment. And then the story doesn't end, but they give you the lifespan of Samson of 20 years right here. Why? Because that Jesus Christ's coming. He comes with judgment. He sets up and rule and reigns for 20 Jubilees, which is a thousand years. Wow. Just... Just stick it in here where you want, right? Because it's inspired. You can't get it in any other book. I'm not worried about what Moses did prior. I'm not worried about what Jacob did prior. And let me tell you something. I read the books. I read Enoch. I read the book of Jasher. They're awesome. But they're not inspired. I looked for Jesus in it. And the patterns wasn't there. I don't care where you've been or what you've done before. Your life was not inspired before Jesus Christ. As soon as you accept Him, man, He might have you doing some crazy stuff. (laughs) Our lives now are inspired because of the Holy Spirit. We go down a path that God has set out for you and me. Yep. Where we end up, uh, I don't know. As long as we ain't right. Out there. Yep. We his bride. Now, I got one chapter. I could finish it. Do you want me to finish it? Yeah. So, The show must go on. (laughs) I just want to show Jesus. So watch this now. Now, verse 20, at the end of 15, And he judged Israel in those days of the Philistines 20 years. And I told you what that was the connection to. Chapter 16. It says the failure of Samson. But check this out. Because, you know, I'm like, Lord, Samson's, the first part, we, it, it, it's, we know he ruled for 20 years. We don't know, you know, uh, and we, we think of Samson and Delilah. Man, where did all this other stuff and all that I just read to you came from, right? Because now we're going to, the last little, last chapter 16 is about Delilah. I mean, who cares about Delilah, right? <laughs> but watch. So this is another part of Samson's life. Right? We know he had an issue. We all have issues. Yes. We all have issues. Peter had issues. Yes. Paul had issues. The they apostles, did. disciples, right. fighting and bickering about who's the greatest. Mm-hmm. What this one's supposed to be doing or that one. We all have issues. Yes. We're all clothed in sin. Yes. Just running a race that God has set before us. Trying to, hey, find our way. Got our eyes set before us. Watch this. Then went Samson to Giza. Now, Giza means a strong place. 
And he saw there a harlot. Now, and he went in unto her. And I'm going I'm to decode this for you too, but let me just tell you something that's really just, you know, mind-blowing. When I told you guys a story about David, that David, his father was Jesse. And Jesse's grandmother, great-grandmother, was Rahab the harlot. So, and you think about, you know, uh, anyway, I don't want to get off track. Let me go back. Okay. Then went Samson to Giza, a strong place, and he saw there an harlot, and he went in unto her. And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither. Now watch. So what's going to happen now? The first part of the story talked about his return. Right? So what's, what do you think this is going to talk about? Talked about The first part of the story talked about his second coming. I wonder if this is going to talk about his first coming. Then Samson... Then went Samson to Giza, which means a strong place. And he saw there an harlot and went in unto her. Remember, Israel was called the harlot, Jerusalem. And it was told to the Gazites, saying, Samson has come hither. And they compassed him and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city. And were quiet all the night, saying, in the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. And Samson lay to midnight. That midnight call to the virgins, the bridegroom's coming. Right? And Samson lay to midnight in the harlot's house. And he arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and, and the two posts. Where did Jesus die? Right outside the city gate. They compassed him about. They wanted to kill him right outside the city gate. But guess what? Samson, who's at the harlot's house, Jerusalem, son, when he comes out the gates, he comes out the gates. So let's see. And he went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders and carried them up to the top of a hill that is before Hebron. Oh, wow. Brought and carried that cross, boy! Whoa. Carried it on his shoulders oh. on top of a hill. I think oh. Mount Moriah is a hill. He tore the doors oh. and the doorposts off of it. My God, son. Oh. Can you imagine those guys standing outside the gate? They don't say nothing about them. I mean, think <laughs> about this. After he ripped the gates off, who's going to jump on him? But let me tell you something about this. When you look into it deeper, he exposed that city. They had no more protection. He opened it up. He made a way. I think Christ made a way in the temple too. Watch. And he took it, he took it and carried it to the top of a hill that is before Hebron, which is a place of an alliance. A treaty. A pact. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek. And Sorek means a choice vine whose name was Delilah, whose name means lustful. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth. And by what means that we may prevail against him. 
that we may bind him to afflict him, and we may give him every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. Oh my God. Here's the betrayal again to Delilah for eleven hundred pieces of silver. Why is eleven important? It's important because he just tore the gates of the city. Maybe I should stop. I'm going to stop. Okay. He just tore the gates of the city off. And the number 11 in Hebrew is the kaf, which means the outstretched arms. Wow. Uh, what? 11. It's a transition time. Only God can be this beside himself. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be found, uh, be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, If thy buy me with seven green uh, wits uh, that were never dried, then shall I be weak, and be as another man. Seven. He's get, seven is covenant, man. He's already kind of leaning to... He's under a covenant. Then the lords of the Philistines brought her up seven green widths which would, had not been dried, and she bound them to him. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he brake the wits as a thread, and uh, toe is broken when it toucheth the fire. Here's <laughs> the fire again. So his strength was not known. And Delilah said unto Samson, And, uh, and, and Delilah said unto Samson, i got to look at something real quick. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith you mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If I bind me fast with new ropes uh, that were never occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, The Philistines are upon thee, Samson. And therewith lies in wait, abiding in the chamber. They lied in wait, abiding in the chamber. And he broke them off his arms like thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with a web. And she fastened it with a pin and said unto him, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson, he awakened out of his sleep, and he went away with the pin of the beam and with the web. So she weaved his hair into a beam or whatever it was in the house, and he just ripped the beam, come out, right? Hmm. And she said unto him, How canst thou say, uh, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Um, and I just want to tell you, you know, um, it's... Uh, it's time for him to die. Thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me wherewith thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him, so his soul was vexed unto death. That he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then all my strength will go from me. And, it, and, if I shall, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. This man is under a covenant. Your hair is your covering. He's under a covenant. That's what gives him his strength. The rooster crowed three times. <laughs> wow. Wow. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath showed me all thine heart. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. The betrayal again. 
And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. It's the covenant. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. Remember this message. The book of Judges is when you walk in covenant with God, you're protected. But if you get out of His covenant, remember what happens within and without. Just like... Uh, and he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at the other times before and shake myself and wits not that the Lord... Uh, let me go back. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as the other times before and shake myself. And he did not know that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. Wow. Man, now we're going back to the garden. And I, I, I can't get into that right now. Watch. And brought him down to Gaza and bound him with feather, fetters of brass. Judgment. Suffering. And he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. That's when the Lord spoke to me about, about Peter. Go tell my disciples I have risen. And Peter. And Peter. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon. That means fish god. And to rejoice, for they said, Our God hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God hath delivered into our hands the, our enemy, the, the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house. And he made them sport. And they set him up between the pillars. Mm -hmm. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand. Now his death. Right? Suffer me that I may feel the pillars. He just tore the pillars of the gate off. We just saw how that was all a picture of the cross. He's at a temple. And now, they're bringing him out to make sport and mock him like they did Christ. And now, he's blinded, right? And he asks a little young lad, place my hands, the outstretched arms, upon the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth. Man, we talked, started off today about the doorpost and the lintel, right? That I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and the women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men. Wow. <laughs> wow. No way. No way! His judgment is about to fall again. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord, remember me, I pray thee. And strengthen me, I pray thee. This one, only this once. O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Man, O oh my God. And there came a time when God came down in the cool of the day to walk to see Adam. Mm -hmm. What day do you think that was that God came down mm -hmm. to walk with Adam mm -hmm. when they had lost their eyesight mm -hmm. or their eyes were open? Mm -hmm. Wow. Watch. Wow. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars 
upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up, one with his right hand and the other with his left. And Samson said, check this out, let me die with the Philistines. He gave his life. It, mm -hmm. He had to push the house down, son. And he had still been standing there. He offered up his own life. Wow. And asked that God take it. Just like Jesus offered up his life. Mm. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the Lord's and upon all the people that were therein. Remember, the rock that falls will crush, but whoever falls upon it will be saved. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Then his brethren, check this out, and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah in Eshtal, between the hornet and the way, in the burying in the burying place of Manoah, his father, and he judged Israel twenty years. So just as Christ, Joseph was already dead, so here it is, Samson, his father was already dead, and he was buried in the same place. Jesus also said. In three days, um, will I be raised up? And not one rock, not one stone in the temple will be together. Same thing as Samson. The whole house. The whole house that's right. Mm -hmm. That's the exactly right. Home. The whole house shook, yeah. and all that. That's right. When he died, the temple shook. The temple. The mountain, the rocks, that's, man, that's good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. There's a movie about that in fact, when I was 12, I went to see it. I've never seen it again. And that whole scene is in the movie. Wow. You want to say something, Carl? No. Man, guys, be encouraged. You know, um... God is is definitely doing some things, and um, if I can stress anything to you today, you know His Word is absolutely amazing. But I just feel within myself, you know, that the message is: look, and Peter, I don't care what you did, done, or where you've been, or you know, it doesn't, man, man, God forgives. Yes. He's amazing, he just like Samson. Right? A great man of faith. I see why now. And um, so be encouraged, yeah. you know? And I love you guys. And I don't know where we're going. You know? Doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's one day at a time. It's still a body. It doesn't matter. Oh, I know where we're going. I don't, I, I just want to know. That's right. Look, I, I, yeah. I know we're going to the promised land, but I don't know the encampments between Egypt and the promised land. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, um, hey, don't forget, um, if you can, if you can give an offering still, we still have the bills over here at the storages until God gives us a place so uh, we can bless the offering. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, you know our needs. Yes. Lord, and all I can say is, but God, Amen. you are amazing, Father. Yes. Thank you for your goodness and your provision. Thank you for the word that you've given us, Father. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you.